It's a cold winter day in Duluth, but thankfully we're in a cozy zero energy home. Rachel, I know that floor is warm, but get up, we've got work to do. If you're entering the building trades or currently working as a home builder and want to use your skills for good, you're in the right spot. In this video, we talk to the owner of a zero energy home that produces more energy in a year than it consumes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we moved in just about a year ago now and have been having a wonderful time enjoying this house. It has been a real eye opener how comfortable and warm and cozy it is compared to the last house we were in. And the best part about it is that uh, we're not paying for the electricity because we have enough solar panels to cover our usage. So I, I don't know what more you could ask for. <laughs> <laughs> there is this misconception out there that an electrified home is going to be really expensive to heat and cool and operate. Oh, but no. you're, fi you're finding just the opposite, right? And I, I think that's a, an important message for people to know that you know, with heat pump water heaters, with, you know, super insulated houses, with, with, with some of these things that you have, you can actually have no, uh, you know, bills towards utilities. You, you're, you don't have a gas meter, so you don't have to pay that monthly meter fee, right? No, no. So that's a savings right there in and of itself. And um, really terrific to hear that you have a home that's affordable to operate. Josh and I uh, were in this house a lot during construction. We both participated in a training and education program, and we used this house during the construction to illustrate how all houses can, and I would argue, you know, should be built moving on into the future. So we start with the enclosure, and essentially everything in this house, windows and doors, has an extra layer. That we can take a look at the wall assembly and we'll see very almost no evidence of any thermal bridging from outside to in. So this house, even though it's at 67 degrees, actually feels closer to like 72 or 75 degrees, maybe even in a typical leaking home. But because of all of these, you know, warm, radiant surfaces around us, we'll probably have people come into this house and think you have heated floors, right? I, I and, get that and, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> all right. the time. And no, it's just insulated. Mm -hmm. So after those two by six stud walls are built and sealed, the house gets wrapped again with continuous insulation layer. The windows have an extra layer, three panes of glass instead of two, we call it triple pane windows. And there's an upcharge to triple pane windows, but the cost of installation remains the same. Right, and what I'm noticing standing by them is like if you stand by a window in a typical house, this is the coldest spot, right? So, right. so you feel the cold from the yeah. glass and, and yeah. here, there's, no. I mean, it's nothing like it, it yeah. feels warm on the frame. It feels warm near the glass. And I think that's, you know, one of those things that we don't have any sun coming through here, right? right? Yes. Even when it's a cloudy, cool day like today, there's not any cold draftiness around the windows. And if for some reason we did lose power and we couldn't heat, uh, I'm pretty sure the temperature in here would stay reasonable for quite a long time, probably days. You could periodically invite people over too and have a meal here and have 100 watts per person in here, yeah, heating right. up your building That's and right. send them That's on right. your way. Yeah. And there's, there's yeah. Your... Cook, something, cook something, have your friends over, be like, thank you, we're good Thank to you go. for heating my house for three yeah. days. We have forced air uh, driven by a heat pump, air source heat pump, and a fresh air ventilation system. We have nice high ceilings here. But in a few places in the house, the ceilings are dropped down. Including this soffit here. Right. And that's so that the ductwork can be run underneath all the insulation in the attic and underneath the, the membrane. And one of the things that makes that so manageable, a majority of the ducts run through a hallway that we'll walk over to. And it's just a, about a 40 inch wide hallway with a dropped ceiling. If this house had the same heating requirements of a conventional house, it would be really hard to fit ducts that were the right size. They would be so large. But when the heating requirement of this house is so low, the, the ductwork can be smaller. The volume and flow of the air to deliver that heat to the rooms can be lower. And the single system, the air source heat pump, 
provides both heating in the wintertime and cooling if and when you need it in the summertime. And this is really important in the southern parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin where the heating load and the cooling loads are roughly the same. And one of the, one of the myths that I keep running into is that you can't use air source heat pump in uh, climate zone seven or way up north that they just don't work. And that's obviously not true because we're doing fine. <laughs> Our, we hit minus 17 the other night and that heat pump just handled it, no issues at all. The technology has advanced quite a bit where it used to be just on and off mm -hmm. for heating and cooling and now it can modulate so the fan outside goes as fast as it needs to. The, the compressor and the, um, the expansion valves can open you know, at, at little increments and close at little increments to meet whatever demand is there. And so the efficiencies have gone through the roof and the effectiveness down to those cold, cold temperatures, like you said, is completely different than equipment 10 years ago. So, one of the things to point out in houses like this is we were standing by those windows and there were no registers on the exterior wall. We didn't have to bring duct work all the way out to the exterior of the enclosure just to keep the people comfortable. So our mechanical systems and our duct work are pretty centralized. They kind of run along what we call the core of the house. So we can go and see the, the hall where these ducts run through. And then we'll go into the mechanical room. So we just walked into an area with a lower ceiling and this hallway connects the mechanical room and the living space to the bedrooms and the bathrooms. And the heating ductwork and the ventilation ductwork is running above my head in this dropped ceiling. Everything was sort of laid out and designed and then the branches go into the rooms. So we've got smaller ducts, fewer ducts, and shorter runs. We can take a look at what that looks like in a mechanical room right here. We have all of our ductwork in the envelope. And for most folks and contractors, builders, that's good enough. But here we've also air sealed and insulated, um, you know, the appropriate ones. And, and that duct sealing is something that ensures that the air that we're delivering, the conditioned air goes to where it's supposed to go. So it's not leaking in this space or in the, the spaces between where it's generated and where it's supposed to go. Yeah, in the, the solar array, of, of course, you know, um, that is one of those things in that design phase where we have to make sure that we're putting an array in here that's going to reliable, reliably produce the energy that is required to operate this building. And in this case, we're producing a little more, um, which, you know, turns us from net zero to net positive. And just like you said before, you know, that that production of your solar is gonna be more in the summer, less in the winter. The energy you use in your building is probably gonna be a little more in the winter and a little less in the summer. So we need that net metering so we can, you know, grab those credits in the summer when we're at peak production and then use those to offset some of our winter loads that where we don't, you know, like today we have a cloudy day and so we don't have that resource available to us. Uh, but those bank credits we have come in handy right You know, at this time of year. Our hope has always been that this house is anything but extraordinary, that this house becomes ordinary and what we see all over. And next, we are gonna go and talk with one of the builders who worked on this home to see what he's been up to since building this house.